All glories to the sum of the bodies. All glories to the sum of the bodies. All glories to the sum of the bodies. All glories to see Guru and Gauranga. Nama on Vishnu Badai Krishna Bada Sai Budali. Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Sami. Namaste Sarasati Devi. Gauravani Pachayam. We say Sasunya Vadi Pasta Chari Satayam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, first canto, uh, chapter eight, and today I believe it's text twenty-one. Krishna ya, Vasudeva ya, Deva Kinanda na ya, Cha Nanda Gopa, Kumara ya. गोविंदा नमो नमः कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदा नमो नमः कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदा नमो नम नंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदा नमो नम कृष्णा वासुदेवाय दिवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदा नमो नम कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदा नमो नम कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदा नमो नम लेडीज कृष्णा वासुदेवाय दिवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदा नमो नम कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदा नमो नम कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदा नमो नम कृष्णा द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड वासुदेवाय अंत द सन ऑफ वासुदेव देवकी नंदनाय अंत द सन ऑफ देवकी च एंड Nandagopa Nanda and the cowherd men Kumaraya unto their son Govindaya unto the personality of Godhead <coughs> who enlivens the cows and the senses Namaha respectful obeisances Namaha obeisances Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A. C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sri La Prabhupada Ki Jai. Let me therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto the Lord, 
who has become the son of Vasudev, the pleasure of Devaki, the boy of Nanda, and the other cowherd men of Vrindavan, and the enlivener of the cows and the senses. Please repeat. Let me therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto the Lord, who has become the son of Vasudev, the pleasure of Devaki, the boy of Nanda, and the other cowherd men of Vrindavan, and the enlivener of the cows and senses. Report. The Lord being thus unapproachable by any material assets, out of unbinded, unbounded and causeless mercy descends on the earth as he is in order to show his special mercy upon his unalloyed devotees and to diminish the upsurges of the demoniac persons. Queen Kunti specifically adores the incarnation or descent of Lord Krishna above all other incarnations because in this particular incarnation he is more approachable. In the Rama incarnation he remained a king's son from his very childhood. But in the incarnation of Krishna, although he was the son of a king, he at once left the shelter of his real father and mother, King Vasudeva and, Dev and Queen Devaki, just after his appearance and went to the lap of Jasodamayi to play the part of an ordinary cowherd boy in the blessed Brajabhumi, which is very sanctified because of his childhood pastimes. Therefore, Lord Krishna is more merciful than Lord Ram. He was undoubtedly very kind to Kunti's brother, Vasudev, and the family. Had he not become the son of Vasudev and Devaki, Queen Kunti could not claim him, him to be her nephew and thus suggest Krishna in parental affection. But Nanda and Jasoda are more fortunate because they could relish the Lord's childhood pastimes, which are more attractive than all other pastimes. There is no parallel to his childhood pastimes, ex pastimes as exhibited in Brajabhumi, which are replicas of his eternal affairs in the original Krishna Loka described in the Chintamani Dham as the Chintamani Dham in the Brahma Sanghita. Lord Sri Krishna descended himself at Brajabhumi with all his transcendental entourage and paraphernalia. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore confirmed that no one is as fortunate as the residents of Brajabhumi and specifically the cowherd girls who dedicated their everything for the satisfaction of the Lord. His pastimes with Nanda and Jasoda and his pastimes with the other, with the cowherd men, and especially with the cowherd boys and the cows, have caused him to be known as Govinda. Lord Krishna as Govinda is more inclined to the brahmanas and the cows, indicating thereby that human prosperity depends more on these two items, namely brahminical culture and cow protection. Lord Krishna is never satisfied where these are lacking. Om Gyanat Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Jena Tazmai Sigur Venema Pum Guru Diva Chalam Pum Gyanangai Te Girim Yad Ki Padam Mahamade Sigurum Diratana Shri Zitani Ishwaram Paramanand Maharabam So it's interesting how Śrīla Prabhupāda is describing um, the Lord here as uh, unapproachable, but also approachable. It seems to be contradictory. Typically we see in, uh, in a society uh, the descriptions of God the Absolute or the Supreme Being uh, as either being um, unapproachable, you can't say his name, no one's ever seen him, um, it may be a booming voice from 
the sky. Uh, or uh, it's um, a cheap, some cheap process where you don't have to do anything. You just accept and you can go about your enjoying ways. So, uh, of course, all of these are uh, incomplete. But here Srila Prabhupada is describing uh, the absolute truth as uh, simultaneously approachable but uh, unapproachable. It's interesting that, um, first of all, Srila Prabhupada points out uh, that the Lord comes out of his uh, uh, Boundless mercy. Yada yada hi dhamasya glanir bhavati bharatam. Krishna comes, the personality of Godhead uh, comes personally uh, for many reasons. Uh, sometimes there's an uh, overabundance of irreligiosity and demoniac uh, persons in the world. The Lord has to come and right this situation, or uh, religiosity has been totally lost. The Lord needs to come and show uh, practically how uh, this can be uh, implemented in society so that there's all success. And Srila Prabhupada is touching upon all these uh, points here uh, in this wonderful purport. Um, that um, it's not by uh, material assets uh, that the personality of Godhead can be uh, understood. Um, the Bhagavatam describes Nayam Sukapo Bhagavan Dehinam Gopika Sutta. Uh, there's a beautiful verse in the Bhagavatam that describes how uh, Krishna, the son of Jasoda, is not accessible uh, to the mental speculators. And the Lord Brahma says the same thing Pantas to Koti Sambra Gamyo. Vayoratapi Manaswamuni Pangvanam, that uh, the great yogis and ascetics, uh, they can meditate for years and years, for uh, uh, lifetime uh, after lifetime. But still, uh, they, uh, they can only uh, approach the effulgence which is emanating from the lotus feet of the Lord. So he's not. Uh, available uh, to those kinds of uh, persons. He's not approachable. You can uh, speculate all you like, and so many people like to uh, write uh, so many uh, literatures, and they uh, come up with so many theories. They have so many different opinions. Even in the assembly of uh, Parikit Maharaj, uh, all, there were so many learned scholars and sages and saints, and they were all uh, giving their opinion, what should be done, until finally Shukadev Goswami came in their presence and he was accepted as uh, the uh, speaker. And he began to uh, describe to Maharaj Parikit the wonderful, wonderful pastimes of Lord Krishna. So it's not that uh, by speculation, again, that we can approach the personality of Godhead, and it's not certainly by severe austerities, uh, that uh, there are so many accounts of how great yogis and personalities uh, go through all sorts of uh, tapasya uh, and penances. Uh, they may get uh, the mercy of some demigod. They may get the mercy of Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma or some other uh, deity. Uh, but uh, still, uh, it falls short. So it's not, again, by um, jnana or uh, yoga or even uh, by karma, those who are um, absorbed in their uh, bodies. It's not that the Lord is approachable by these material assets, as Prabhupada points out here. He's not approachable. 
But out of his uh, causeless mercy, uh, he, shows, uh, he shows himself. Queen Kunti later on in this uh, chapter, she very nicely, she uh, describes how uh, beautifully the Lord, he appears uh, in, uh, amongst all species, amongst all men, uh, gods, animals, aquatics, uh, how the supreme personality, the uh, uh, the soul of the universe, he, she describes him. How the soul of the universe, and of course Krishna is uh, maintaining everything, we know that. Uh, uh, with all of his uh, various shaktis, parasya shakti vidhaya shuyate, uh, Krishna is very easily maintaining the whole uh, universe. But that same personality is uh, appearing uh, uh, in this beautiful uh, form of uh, Lord Krishna. It's bewildering. And for the common person, it is bewildering. And so many people uh, uh, have, uh, to this day, they can't uh, uh, perceive or understand or equate how God can appear in this wonderful, beautiful form. Even Lord Brahma, what to speak of those who are uh, in, this, uh, in this world with tiny little brains and with their limited experience. Uh, they're trying to understand how, that, how is it that God uh, comes in uh, this beautiful form uh, and enacts uh, wonderful transcendental pastimes. How is it possible? It's, it's very bewildering. But uh, she, Prabhupada, makes point of it uh, later on in the purport that uh, he does this because he's attracted by the unalloyed devotional service of his uh, devotees. And those who are uh, favored by even a slight trace of that mercy can understand how uh, this is possible. They can understand uh, the greatness of uh, the personality of Godhead. Again, those who are who are speculating or may uh, study the Vedic literatures, uh, they may study for years, and they still can't uh, they still can't comprehend how uh, the absolute truth is coming into this world, and He's performing such beautiful. Uh, attractive, loving uh, pastimes. Uh, and this is the special feature as we hear, as we read in uh, the Nectar Devotion, that this is one of the um, uh, what's the unique qualities of Krishna is that he's, he's all attractive. Uh, that um, even uh, the uh, one may be engaged in these other processes, but uh, as soon as one comes in contact with the uh, pastimes and the uh, glorifications of uh, the Lord Krishna, uh, immediately one uh, becomes attracted. Queen Kunti specifically adores the incarnation and descent of Lord Krishna above all other in uh, all other incarnations, because this particular inc incarnation is more approachable. How is it that the Lord, uh, he's unapproachable, but at the same time, he's now uh, exhibiting his approachability? In previous incarnations, Srila Prabhupada points out that the Ram incarnation, he remained uh, a king's uh, son. Uh, that uh, he um, appeared, he showed by uh, his uh, practical example how one should uh, govern, how one should conduct, conduct himself, not like the uh, narcissistic, uh, um, pathological leaders that we have uh, in the world nowadays, who are totally, uh, they're uh, uh, totally obsessed in uh, their own 
glorification. And their only interest is their own position. Uh, the envy for all other living beings. No empathy, of course. Not at all. But the Lord has to come in this beautiful uh, incarnation as Lord Ram. And he shows by practical example how one should uh, govern. How one uh, can uh, be in uh, uh, such a responsible position and uh, at the same time have uh, empathy for uh, all living beings and not be uh, 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 infatuated by this a sense of uh, self-importance which again is is there in in the present uh, day and people are fantasizing with so much with their power and their beauty uh, they're uh, totally uh, deluded so the Lord has to come and show by practical example how, how to govern and how to uh, protect the citizens and how society can be uh, in a very um, uh, beautiful uh, environment, even though we're still in this material world, which is uh, such a temporary, miserable place. Still, even though uh, 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 if the uh, if the governorship uh, is is proper, then uh, everything is provided for. We read in the fourth canto how um, was it the fourth canto that uh, Bumi she was responding to Pritu's third canto. She was responding to uh, Pritu's uh, demand. Why aren't you providing uh, uh, the natural opulences which are there? And uh, her response was that it's not my fault. I'm just simply uh, reacting or responding to uh, the uh, leaders of society, the kings and the rulers who are abusing um, and misleading. So naturally she uh, withdraws everything you know, everything uh, is limited uh, and of course that's that's happening gradually we're seeing now as Kali Yuga is progressing people are getting less and less natural opulences uh, to the point where uh, nothing will be there and people will have to resort to uh, uh, eating their children how gross is that it's unimaginable. So she was simply reacting. But if the if the a society is uh, governed properly, if it's established properly, then everything is there. Um, so Lord Ram showed by his practical example how uh, that could be done. But especially now, uh, this incarnation or this appearance of the Lord in his uh, beautiful uh, form of uh, Lord Krishna in uh, Brajabhumi where he enacted his uh, uh, transcendentally uh, attractive and sweet pastimes uh, uh, these are uh, these are uh, uh, extra special because of the unalloyed um, service that was rendered by the residents of Vrindavan the, the other uh, appearances of the Lord, you, uh, there's uh, awe and reverence there, certainly. Uh, that the Lord is uh, uh, merciful in the form of a Nishinga Dev, or he's uh, merciful in the form of Lord Varaha, or he's merciful in the form of uh, Lord Ram. And uh, they're providing uh, so many... Uh, um, uh, pleasures and and uh, protections to the devotees, but in this form, especially of uh, the Lord in um, in Vrindavan, is uh, different because the Lord chooses Nayam Pravachanina Labhyo Namedaya Bahu Nashutena because the Lord 
uh, is choosing to reveal himself to these uh, unalloyed uh, devotees. It's not that by other processes, uh, by karma, jnana, yoga, as we mentioned earlier, it's not by these other processes that Krishna becomes available. But he uh, becomes available to those who are engaged in his uh, unalloyed uh, devotional service. And um, such is the um, position of the residents of Vrindavan. In particular, and especially as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu points out, as Shri Prabhupada points out, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirms Rajabadu Varghena Vak Yalpita that especially the uh, gopis, uh, the um, damsels of Vrindavan, uh, they're especially um, uh, mentioned because of their uh, uh, exemplary or, or most pleasing. Uh, services offered to uh, Krishna, to Radha and Krishna. It's especially uh, uh, um, mentioned. Shri Prabhupada points out that these ch childhood pastimes, uh, as exhibited in Braja Bhumi, are replicas of the eternal pastimes which are there in uh, Chintamani Dham. So although uh, uh, the Lord is um, coming uh, from the spiritual world and descending to this uh, earthly plane, uh, the same uh, uh, activities are going on, the same uh, experiences, the same exchanges uh, are right there uh, and they're present and they're uh, shown in uh, the pastimes of Lord Krishna in Vrindavan. And, the, and, Queen, and Queen Kunti here, she's She's making uh, this point that this is so uh, amazing. This is so bewildering. How is it that the Supreme Lord is coming and he's engaging in these uh, remarkable uh, exchanges between himself and his devotees? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu later on tells uh, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami that uh, it's um, that Krishna is not attainable by those who are uh, subservient uh, to the tongue. He quotes this one a beautiful verse. Jivera Lala say ye iti uti hai, where he says that uh, Krishna is not attainable by those who are subservient uh, to the tongue who are running here and there, uh, simply serving the uh, or devoted uh, to their uh, genitals and belly. They cannot attain Krishna. They can't understand how uh, Krishna is uh, engaged in these wonderful transcendental pastimes because they're uh, controlled by their senses. They're not, they're not able to enter into these uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, exchanges, wonderful pastimes of the Lord. And how bewildering it is for even those who are uh, engaged in devotional service. How is that Krishna is uh, having these wonderful, amazing exchanges between uh, himself and his uh, loving devotees who are uh, experiencing different uh, mellows? Sri Prabhupada points out here in the purport that um, his pastimes with Nanda and Jasoda and his pastimes with the coward men and especially with the coward boys and cows have been, uh, and the cows have caused him to be known as Govinda. This very interesting point that Sri Prabhupada makes here right at the end of the purport that um, that there are certain things which are critical for uh, success in society. Uh, and all other things are uh, simply uh, ornaments. What? Bhagavad Bhakti Hinasya? What is that verse? Bhagavad Bhakti Hinasya? Jati Shastram Javastapa. Apranasya Dehasya Mandanam Lokaranjanam. That someone may have a very uh, nice birth. Certainly there are a lot of well-to-do people in the material estimation, 
They may uh, have um, wealth uh, that, uh, 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 like some of these uh, billionaires who uh, are engaged in uh, Apple or this industry or that industry, they may have a lot of wealth. Or they, uh, one may be in, even in the higher planets. Uh, and certainly it's attractive. Or someone may uh, have uh, Shastram. He may have a, a lot of knowledge about uh, the Shastra. And they can speak very nicely and, and uh, confuse a lot of people. Uh, to the point where everyone uh, adores them, even though they're talking in circles. Sometimes you see how, just like a lawyer, he's, he's so uh, expert that he can take uh, something uh, and turn it into nothing. They even had this one show some years ago, I don't know if it's on anymore. What was it called? Seinfeld? It was a show about uh, these people who talked about nothing. They made something out of nothing. And the whole, <laughs> the whole series is about these people who are just talking to each other and nothing, and they're, and they're not talking about anything of any value. It's just, it's just strange. So uh, someone may be very uh, scholarly, certainly, one may be very, very um, expert in flowery language. Uh, or Japastapa, uh, Japatapas, right? Uh, one may be very expert in uh, chanting so many shlokas and uh, can rattle them off, just like uh, you can go to uh, some places, uh, some temples, particularly in India, uh, where I was and traveling some years back. We went to South India, and we went to. Um, uh, it was Trivendram, and uh, the brahmanas were uh, chanting some shlokas during this yagya, and they were just chanting, uh, rattling off these, and you couldn't follow them. It was just, it was a uh, dizzying. Uh, so they may be very expert, although we know that. Uh, in the Kali Yuga, uh, even their chanting is uh, uh, inadequate. It falls short. Uh, even there may be a little uh, mistake in the pronunciation. Just like in the sixth canto, the story of, was it Vichasura? The, the, the mantras were chanted, oh, just, just one little mistake. And instead of uh, becoming the uh, what was that, friend? Or instead he became killed by Indra. Just a little mistake. Or one may be engaged in so many uh, austerities. And there's uh, many people who are very qualified in uh, holding their breath underwater. Okay? That's very nice. Uh, or you can stand on your toes for a long time. Sometimes you go to these athletic events and people are very uh, qualified to do all sorts of things. They can flip around on the mat uh, or uh, twist around on some rings in the sky. So they may, be, uh, they may have a lot of... Um, athletic acumen uh, but uh, these all these things are ornaments on a dead body devoid of devotional service devoid of devotional service they're simply uh, ornaments that nobody cares about just like a dead body you can put all kinds of fancy clothes on it you can put all uh, a wonderful a crown, a gold crown on it but who cares the only people that care about it are the grave uh, plunderers. A, few, a, thou, a thousand years later, they try and break into the graves and rob the ornaments. 
<laughs> rob the ornaments and all the souvenirs. <laughs> well, who cares? But here, Srila Prabhupada is making a point that uh, without Brahminical culture and cow protection, Krishna is not satisfied. And society is, uh, uh, is not satisfied, of course. It's, it's, it's a failure. So, um, uh, in conclusion here, uh, Devaki or uh, Queen Kunti is uh, uh, appreciating and so much uh, uh, glorifying this wonderful form of Lord Krishna who's come and he's uh, performing all these wonderful pastimes simply so that we can, we can become attracted to it and if we become attracted to it then uh, our lives are uh, complete. Are there any questions or comments? Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.